Hi everyone, I'm Nutrix Descent Guy. Today is the day after Christmas and it's my yearly list of the best apps for making music on the iPad. I did that exercise last year and I did 17's app for 2017 and this year I couldn't get under 30 apps. So you'll see a lot of the apps I talked about last year come back because of course if they were good last year they're not bad this year they're still good so a lot of these apps are still on my list not all of them but a lot of them and a lot of other apps came up uh, this year because you guys wrote to me and say hey, try this one try that one try this one so I did try them and I learned a lot about other apps I didn't even I didn't know about or I didn't ever tried before now I broke down these apps into categories again I've got DAWs, Digital Audio Workstation, of course. I've got drum machines, um, which are, a, let's say, a sequencer for drum with a sound generator of drums or percussions. And I have something else called, what I call beat makers. Beat makers are a mix of um, uh, a couple of synthesizers, a drum machine, and a sequencer, but it's not a full-fledged DAW, you know. It's powerful enough to uh, create music, but it might not be powerful enough to be the the end uh, tools to create music, meaning it's often the tool made for creation and then when you're ready and the song is, 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 you know, or the part of the songs are built well, you export them and you finish into another app. So it's like, I would say Sketchpad or a, a great start point for a lot of music. So these are what I call beat makers. We'll talk about them. I have synthesizers. Of course, I'm a synth guy. That's the biggest part of this video. I have a new uh, categories about effects. Um, this year I started to use more effects because I see that there's more and more dedicated effects plugin you can download. And because now you have audio unit on the iPad, uh, a lot of, of plugins are coming out and they're really great. So I'll talk about some of them. I'll finish with uh, tools or utilities, you know, that part that uh, everybody needs to have, but it's not so sexy to have, you know, it's a tool. But uh, these tools often are, are, you know, what makes the rest glued together and works. Now, before I start, I just want to come back on the point that I talked about 17 app last year, and these videos are still good. So in some cases, I'll put the video down in, in the subs and, um, description, and you can go back and see these videos. And a lot of the other apps I'll talk today, I did a full review or tutorial on them. I'll put the links in the description if you wanna see the whole thing. Okay, so let's start with the DAWs. The DAWs, I still go back to Gadget from Korg as my favorite all around DAW. There's many reasons why I do that. First of all, there's a wealth of, of, of sound modules to play with. Either drum machines, synthesizers, pads, sampler, mongler, you know, yeah, mongler or, 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 you know, distorters and effects and all that. That it's, it's a cool uh, list of, of great sounding synth to start with. And the, the sequencer has everything you expect. Motion recording of every knob, the fact that you can have it on your Mac today also on your iPad, on your iPhone, and you can save in the cloud. So you can start a song on the iPad, say, okay, it's cool, save, save in the cloud, open your iPad, your iPhone, continue the same song, oh, cool, save in the cloud, and then go on your computer and continue. That's, that's a really great tool to just move around and make it happen. So it's pretty fun, pretty nice. So this is only for gadget playing, that's it. sounds nice you know the sound are are warm enough and cool enough that actually warm enough and cool enough okay okay next one 
Next one is my favorite app for mixing. Aurea Pro is amazing. It's a sequencer, but I don't, I don't use a sequencer. Uh, you can actually go into the sequencer part and use it as a sequencer. Uh, you can have, but I, I actually use it as a mixer. So I take the sounds and the beats I made in other apps and I put it in there. I finish the editing and, and then I mix. And that's, that's what I really get out of this. This is so nice. What's nice about this is you can actually zoom in, you know, very precise. You've got all these effects processing here. You've got editing, delete, split, all that stuff. You get menu for loading and mix down. And one of the cool thing that I'm going to close this, um, and we go back to um, the mixing window, mixing window. You have effects here, uh, and the amount of effects you have is amazing. And you can actually load up everything else you have that is compatible either to inter-application audio or audio unit, they all appear here. So you can use all of the other apps you have. I'll do another video just on this one, but I personally really enjoy mixing with that. And if you have a Mac Key Control Universal or something compatible with the UE format, you can actually use that with this and control with a real surface control the entire mixer. So it becomes a full-fledged replacement of a DAW for mixing and uh, the effects you have in there. I'll talk again about the effects when we get to the last part today um, for effects, but you've got a bunch of uh, PSP effects in there and you have also the option of buying Fab Filters plugin where they're just amazing. They sound great and for the price, they're less than half price of what you would pay on the computer because they're only working in Aria Pro. So, but it's really, really fun. It sounds good. And that's my favorite way to mix today. Next one is uh, Cubasis. And the last uh, year and a half, they did add the Waves plugins. In my case, I've got the, the whole, let's say, Ultra Maximizer. So these are just like cool because they're, we used to only have them on computer and then you have the Wave plugins right into uh, Cubase. In my case, I prefer Gadget because it works like in, in patterns. Um, whereas Cubasis works more like the traditional way where you have a whole song. Um, and you, you can also do patterns, but it's, it's made to have a linear approach. So depending on how you work, Cubasis might be more the one you like because it would work the way you're uh, used to. It's more like traditional sequencer in a way. If you have Cubase, it's the best friend for Cubase because what you did what you did in the Cubase can be exported right into Cubase and you can finish your song in your computer. So that's pretty cool. That's it. Then you have Beatmaker 3. Now Beatmaker 3, you guys pushed me to actually use it and try it because I actually I, I worked with Beat, Beatmaker 1 and uh, you know way back when it started and it was fun, but I, I it didn't answer what I wanted to do. Um, and when I started to play with it, I... I started to understand a little bit why people say they love this thing, because it's just like amazingly powerful. But I would, if I, if, if I had to describe the differences between these, let's say, three DAWs, because I still say, let's say Aria Pro, it's a linear sequencer, but it's for me, I'm really using it for the mixer. So it's, it's a great studio for mixing. Uh, the three others, like Cubasis, um, Gadget, and, and Beatmaker 3, are kind of, they're, they can do the same thing, but they're different in their, their, the workflow that they have. Whereas um, Beatmaker 3 is more aimed at people using samples and the approach of um, machine from native instrument. So it's a bit of the same logic. You can sample whatever you want on these pads and you can trigger them and play them. So you can have your, your song, you know. It can be really interesting in the way you, you use them, but it's, it's all linked to the sample you sample, you know. It's, uh, and it's pretty powerful to the point that I'm, I'm getting lost in it. Um, because there's so many options and depending where you are, you can have inserts on just an effects, insert on a track, insert on them. It's, it's kind of, a, um, so it's really fun, really powerful. And it supports everything that is like plugin based, audio unit, inter-application, audio bus. So it's really, really powerful. Um, and it's one I want to dig more this year into. 
because uh, of the sheer power of it. It's just surprisingly, um, you know, the wealth of option you can have in there is really, really awesome. That's it for Beatmaker 3. Just one week ago, I saw that Nano Studio 2 was coming out. And I'm, I was really interested in that because I used to own Nano Studio 1. Well, it was only called Nano Studio at the time. I did a couple of songs with that. And then one day, as the iOS upgraded, um, Nano Studio did not get upgrades and then it just stopped working correctly. And even Apple said, you know, uh, ask the developer to uh, upgrade that, blah, blah, blah. So I stopped using it all around. And now I'm happy to say that they're back. Blip Interactive came out with Nano Studio 2. So let's open Nano Studio 2 and look at what it does. It's, it's a full-fledged DAW. This is totally new. It came out like a week ago. Now, um, you have the project window when you load, save, have the settings for the songs and all that stuff. You have a lot of information. Then, then you go into this window here, which is kind of the track window if you want. And you have also the mixer window. Now, you basically have two windows, but every time you double click on something, you open up another window. If you, if you double click on the track, then you see the drum tracks. So you see the drum sound. And if you want to erase or create new, you go into draw, and then you can draw in or draw out, you know. And then you can. Whatever, it's just, uh, I was just playing around with a song. I've got something, that's all I want right now. Now, this is really easy to just type it in or you go record and then you, you play it. Um, at the top here, what you see are the different tracks, two, three, four, five, six. These are the different tracks that you can have access to. Let's show you what this does. You have an empty tracks, okay? Let's uh, add a track here. Go back to this one here, plus track. I'm gonna go plus new track here, okay? Double press, double click on this one, and then ask you, what do you want? You know, do you want Obsidian? That's the default. Uh, you can change the name if you want for the track. The instrument itself, you click, you have Obsidian, which is a synthesizer. It could play simulation of analog sound, or it could play PCM. You get a slate here. Uh, slate is the drum. You have external MIDI, so, and then audio unit. You say, yes, I want this one, and you press on it. And then you get the list. I've got here all my audio unit instruments, a parallel, cyclop, egoist, and all that stuff. So let's say I'm going to use, I don't know what, Poison 202, press on this one. I'm actually running. I'll take that one. So then this now is playing within the app, Nano Studio 2. So if I go back here, it's here. And then I even have the name Poison 202 Sync Lead. I've got the name of the sound and the name of the instrument. Pretty awesome. Now, if I want to record something, and I want to play the sound, I'll have to go back to this one and I'll go back to Poison and I've got because I don't have any keys, so that's where I'm going to play. I press play, then I've got no clue what I'm doing. I'm just, I just took a song, and but you understand I can just play anything here and then you enter your notes and then you have a song. Um, if you look at, so this, of course, if you want to edit the sound and you want to, I can actually, that's it. You can go back to this one. Again, you have access to the screen and you can do the editing that you expect out of that synth. Pretty nice. And you can have access to the banks of sound built in. Now, if I switch to the next instrument, that's Obsidian. And if you go into editing for the patch, uh, edit, you've got a lot of information. So that's a built-in synth. You have the synthesizer, you've got different source of waveform, wavetable, uh, noise, uh, nano saw, you have FM synthesis, uh, PD, I'm not sure what PD is. Um, we have to look into the manual. I just got this today, so um, I'm not sure of everything it does, but it looks like a really updated version of the original Nano Studio One. I'm just going to show you um, if I load a project so you know what they can do. Discard that beautiful song and give you an idea of 
So a, a demo song. And what's cool is they actually also use subgroups. So they group the different sounds together within a group, like the bass group or the voice group or the beat groups the master sight chain all that stuff so it's really interesting the way they actually use it so i'm pretty sure that's another one that i'm gonna i'm gonna play more with it Let's talk about the beat makers. Beat makers again, really quick way to start making a song. One of the fun ones I have is Scram is just a neat little tool to get ideas really fast out. You know, each of them, they have, I can mute these things, you can just have, So your way you enter the, the notes are a little bit different than what you see often. And you can say, and then you can say the sound. Let me hear your beat, you know. You want another one? Okay. First one, second one. First one, second one. So another great way to really quickly start your own stuff. Now, if you want to have more sound, they sell these little packs of, of sounds. Um, and they're really, I mean, affordable. It's uh, 808 sounds for, for $2.79. You've got uh, some other, like, uh, they call them short bleeps. Um, the Riot Pack, a sub bass, uh, Riot Pack, a neon, some rave sounds. So these are just like, they're, they're really affordable. But the first, what you have right now, that I'm Scram by default is free. So cool thing to play with. And um, again, you can just have ideas coming out of this really quickly. So let's turn that off. Next one will be uh, one of my still favorite one to go back to, <laughs> the IMS 20. And this is just, um, um, okay, let's just play it. Okay, so you've got, okay, these are muted. So if I go back here, I'll show you what it is. You go into synth, you've got the synthesizer at the top, you've got the, the sequencer, you have one synth, one sequencer, and when you go into drum, you've got six different drums and each of them they have a whole MS-20 to make the drum sound. So really powerful if you like making sound, if you're a synth person, that's really fun to play with. So it was on my list last year, it's still on my list this year. It's still a great sounding analogish uh, sound. Um, so that's for the IMS-20. Then we have the iPoly 6. Same logic, the iPoly 6 is um using wait a sec is using the you've got the full you know synthesis of the iPoly uh, the, sorry sorry the poly 6 so the next one is the poly, iPoly 6 and you've got the whole thing you can turn it off It just sounds you know, warm. Well, I mean, the sound of these corks are, are amazing for me. I, you know, they sound just like, like you would in the hardware synthesizer. 
the drum you've got uh, six drum sounds and again if you want to edit these sounds you have access to the all the entire synthesizer this whole entire synthesizer now is made for doing just a kick just a snare just a hi-hat and so on and so forth so really powerful to do that sequence mode or synth mode and then you go into synth you've got synth one and synth two so you can have a lead a bass and six drum sounds in just this little app so it's really powerful and it sounds nice it sounds warm and analogish ish again so again in one of my top favorite uh, beat maker now the next one is that's a new one electribe wave from korg it came out this year uh, it's basically uh, an electribe that has a wavetable synth in it so you can have drum sounds these are sample based with effects on each of them separately and synthesizers And what's nice about this, you can actually move. You can play around in the position of the oscillator and can. So you can have these eight different synth sound based on wavetable or PCM, just like classic sound if you want. Drum, you get eight different sample bass sounds. So the example that comes with it, they're really interesting. So they've got nice examples, but what's cool also about it is when you actually start uh, making synthesizer sounds, you can go into this, you've got the sounds and you get the mixer, the full mixer. And um, when you record, let's go sound, sequence, you can record the sequence where the notes are. Um, so you see the different synths and sound, and you get a motion sequencing also. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty awesome the way it works. So, you can also load your own samples for the drum. Right now, what you can't do, but I will wish we could, is to load our own wavetables. But again, not a big deal for now, but that could be really cool. Egoist is a really cool little app. You've got three sounds for a drum, kick, snare, eye at, and you get different uh, kit you can load in. You have the bass that is basically an acid bass, and it sounds really awesome. And then you have uh, a slicer. So you put your sample in there, you slice it up, and then you trigger it. So it becomes really powerful in how it works. That's so gonna just a bass line. Just listen to that. Sounds really nice. Okay, if you add the drum, you get different options for the drums. But let's keep that one. And the first one is the slicer. So, what I did, I actually took this. This is a bass line that comes, I think, from the MS20 slice it up into this one. So I've got the MS-20 playing here, sliced up, and then triggered this way. 
And if I check it, another one. Then you add effects. You get this thing, which is just a nice effects. So that's it. That's sugar bites. Really quickly, uh, it's it's really fun because you have the slicer, the bass, and the beat, and effects that can be played in real time throughout the the sequence. So really, really fun, and. I could, I mean, what you just heard, I, I was able to, you know, put that out in about an hour just because it was easy to play and, and create stuff. So it's really fun to play with. So that's, I, I this year, Sugar Bite for me was um, a discovery for the iPad. Um, I knew they existed, but I didn't know they were doing stuff for the iPad. Now, the next one I really like is uh, Jim Odeo. And I'm not sure what to put it. Um, Groove Rider, I put it in either in DAWs or um, Beat Makers because this thing is just sounding really nice. Um, it's really powerful, uh, so powerful that sometimes I, I get mixed up in, in because there's only one window. But at the same time, if you, if you use it a lot, it, it becomes obvious. Listen to some of these sounds, man. This just sounds really nice. Listen to that, this is just like... So you have the sequence, you have uh, the keys in keyboard mode. You have the different parts you're playing. You've got the sequence mode, you get the chord modes, the slice mode. You can actually write, um, you can you have enough here, you can change the type of different. What's interesting is that window here, basically, if you know how to use an Electribe from Korg, you'll get around this really rapidly because when you click on this, you're basically moving around into the same window here. You get the different wave you can load in. Um, these are for the drum sounds or um, instruments. You get oscillators here. And these are really powerful. The sound engine you have in there is the one from the Poison 202. From Dim Audio, which is really a very nice uh, all-around synth. So the engine is really powerful and sounds really nice. So that's why I, that's why I come back to this just because of the sound, man. It just sounds good. Now the drum, I'll go faster on this one because I did do a whole video about my favorite top drum machines, and they're the same. So I have the DM1. The DM1 is still a great, cool, you know, drum machine to go back to. So if you want a full thing, you go see my video about it. Then we have um, the DM2. I like this one because the sounds are not sampled, and you can create your own sounds. So if you go drum sounds, kicks there, all of them. The capacity of the synthesis here is super interesting. So I really like that. That you know. Just, I like these sounds, they're just like cool. Sick beats. Um, this, I've been playing with this for probably seven years. I like that, st that thing. Again, very electronic sounding sounds. Uh, you want to go see one, you can go here and edit the way it sounds. You can show the envelope and... And, and there's something called uh, the randomizer. That's really fun. Randomize all the sounds. So 
Well, that's it. That's the sick beat. I really like it. Now, elastic drum. It's really interesting the way it works. You get your sequence. In this case, you get uh, different patterns. You have your patterns here for the arrangement. For each of the sound, you get the volume for each pattern, the volume, the effects. Um, you have plenty of effects to work with, and they're really interesting. And you've got the kind of 12 different synthesis for the different kick sounds and synthesizers also. <laughs> 